All right, here we go. My name is Travis Neville. This is the Travis Neville Podcast. I wrote this book called Reviving Masculinity. You can get anywhere books are sold uh, and stuff like that. I got the chance to talk to Philip Folsom. He is a an anthropologist at USC. Holy shit, I now talk to people who are professors at worldwide institutions. Uh, yeah, he's a professor of anthropology at USC. Also is uh, a partner in a men's group called k4 um super interesting guy he's a veteran we talked a lot about uh, rites of passage and about initiations uh from from boyhood into manhood um you know the stuff we usually talk about the guy was super interesting super cool guy i got uh, i was lucky to, to connect with him and, and and record with him for an hour uh, so here's my conversation with phil Folsom. if you guys don't follow uh, K4 Men's Group on all the socials, you should. They're posting great stuff. Uh, one of their key um, speakers, the guy that jumps into their stuff all the time, is Jeff Donovan. So, pretty cool. Um, we talk about him. We talk about a few other people that you guys have heard of. Uh, great conversation. I hope that in some way this conversation with Philip, Philip Folsom helps you to get your shit together. Have a great week. Go ahead. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you just fine, man. Oh, there you go. You just came on against you. Okay. Right. Had Great a, setup there, man. I feel like I you should be dropping me off in the the Nanzang province, you know, 50 clicks north of Saigon. I love yeah. your headset. It's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. I'm actually not I, – I, I only use this if I'm traveling. Um, okay. But I, list, I just – I like the aesthetic of the, you know, Yeah, I like, it. I like it too. Plus, yeah. you can hear it. You can hear it better. And I know you're, you know, veteran-minded uh situation speaking of that i just joined the american legion i'm not a veteran but my uh my grandfather was in world war ii and that was enough to get in i really yeah. just jumped in i mean i'm a big supporter of course but um they have a motorcycle club and i, I mm-hmm. wanted to ride with those guys so uh, that's why i jumped in so pretty pumped about that. That, that that's a good veterans organization Do you have any experience with them yes um i'll sometimes use some of their locations if i'm doing a if I'm doing a, a veterans program, resiliency, PTS, suicide prevention, one of those, some of program, then I'll oftentimes use some of their locations. And they're always really cool with great, great crossover with any of the um, honor-based cultures. So police, fire, vets, they all are really cool with each other. And that's one of the hubs. Right. And we're losing yeah. them. You know, there a lot of them are going away. A lot of those, you know, big fraternal uh, foundational pieces, um, you know, the Elks, all those fraternal yeah. organizations Mason's are all gone. Moose. Yeah, they're Mason, all disappearing. They, uh, yeah, I agree. And I think what it is is the people who are involved in that stuff, they just get older and, and they pass on. And then the young people just, for whatever reason, aren't interested in it. It's a damn shame because there's a lot to be had there. There's a lot to be gained. Well, for me, and, you know, anthropology-wise, um, that is, uh, all those things are of great interest to me. Like, why? And, and I actually joined the Masons because just for like a little, like almost field research. I'm like, okay, so- sure. What was this? Why are all of our founding fathers Masons? You know, mm-hmm. most of the presidents, all of these great yep. men, and and now they're not. You know, so what was the? Where did the break happen? And it really, it's a, it's really a, a component of the of perceived relevance, in that it's, it's no longer uh, relatable to the current climate that we're in about masculinity. So we, it, it, that's on us. You know, uh, as leaders in the men's work field. Mm-hmm. is to um, educate, but also um, be adaptable enough to bring something to the table that makes sense for, you know, a 25-year-old kid. And yeah. part of it is... What can they offer for him? Yeah, you can't... You And it's it's not acceptable to be uh, fat or out of shape. You know? Not in those you, groups. It's not no. acceptable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if you're, if you're a young man, who, who are you looking at in terms of a masculine role model? And what you're looking at is Rogan, Goggins, uh, Willing, Jocko. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those are those are the men who are now relevant 
And and those are the they they could start their own you know masculine Internal organization. Organization, sure. So what did you from from an anthropological perspective? What did you? I mean, I, I bet I know the answer, but what did you come up with as you were doing that field work? You joined the Masons, and what were you? What did you come up with? What are the? I guess what I'm hoping to hear you say is to talk about uh, what are the personality things that are improved by being in that organization? What are the things, how does that fill yeah. your purpose? Things of that nature. What would you come up with? Well, some of it is um, men require institutions. Uh, and that's a really important Great. structure. Uh, women and men are, initiate very differently. Uh, women tend to self-initiate due to menstruation. As soon as you're biologically you know, mature, you are a woman at that point. And and part of that is because women and children have inherent value in the world. They don't need to do anything. They get to be and they carry value, at least yeah, until at least as long as they're young, right? Right. It, right. it goes. It drops. The, it's a fucking cliff at a certain <laughs> point, which is sad <laughs> yeah. for them, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas men, we have no inherent value. Nope. You got to earn it. You got to you got to turn yourself and, into something, and that ramp to be pretty slow. Yeah. And so really the you know men require other men to initiate them into a uh, operating system of value and and those men exist in institutions. Uh, you know you're not going to have just a, a a loose fraternity of men wandering around helping other men get initiated because it takes a very long time and you need to be you know embedded in these honor-based cultures. So institutions mm -hmm. are really really important. And obviously the Masons are um, almost extra religious in the sense that, you know, there's always been churches like that, that were, were, you know, initiating um, men, young people in general into some sort of infrastructure. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the, there was also a certain secularism that needed to happen because it was a, it was really strange having, um, uh, religious systems also be financial systems also being cultural systems and yeah. and and that conflict just, of interest yeah co uh, yeah catholic of interest ah there you go <laughs> I see we just you coined there. We, we just coined a term catholic we did, of man. interest hashtag catholic of interest <laughs> and really i mean you could you could see it fall apart in um you know europe tracking the enlightenment and um uh, you just couldn't have an organization that ran everything there needs yeah, to be, be a, a um, you know, divisions of of power. Yeah, so. checks and balances. I mean, like you mentioned our forefathers. A lot of them were Masons, and they understood that that you can't really trust one body. You got to have another body to check them, yeah. and that's yeah. why the checks and balances are in place. That's why we have the three points of power. I forget what you call them officially, but you know, the judicial system, executive system, our branches of our government, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, they've got to be able to to check each other i very much agree and i'm a huge fan of the separation of church and state no matter what your beliefs are they they're because they're two different things i mean finances and religion i don't see a lot of crossover there as far as appropriateness now you mentioned um you know that i don't want to put words in your mouth but the way that i've always said it is this uh, women girls become women biologically as you said they do it's just a thing that happens whereas boys become men socially you've got to be taught and then again you have to be initiated somehow and that initiation only happens by other with other successful men so absent these institutions that you and i are discussing where what are the outlets where are the places where where a young man can can become you know can can cross that rite of passage yeah it's a it's a tricky one there's a lot of shadow initiations that are taking place which means that they're not uh, they're not complete and they're missing a few really vital components. For example, um, getting jumped into a gang is an initiation. Sure is. Uh, many of the branches of the military are initiations. Uh, so you're know, getting a driver's license is an issue. There's a lot of initiations. Sorts. Um, yeah. um, the closest one we really have is probably the Marines. Um, if you kind of look at all of those, the big pillars of full transformation into something yeah. that is um based on a set of set of shared values and morality and moving you from a place of um almost external validation or instant gratification to an operating system of service to something larger than yourself mm -hmm. and the marines do that fairly fairly um closely i mean they're very similar to like a modern day spartan experience and you can see that the evidence of that in that i was a soldier 
um, Marines are Marines. No matter what, forever. So they they went through a full initiation, whereas I mm -hmm. went through a partial initiation. I see. Because but now I I became you know something else when I you know I I would now identify myself more as um, you know I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a business owner, I, you know I'm all these things. Mm -hmm. You know, so, soldier was you know in the same way in saying that you know I was a jujitsu practitioner. You know, yes, it's was. formative to you. It, it does. It yeah. does have a piece in who you are, but it isn't exactly how you define yourself now. Yeah, yeah. And so when you see um, certain fraternal organizations, certain even even universities, if you if you compare, for example, and I live here in Los Angeles, so we have USC and UCLA. Those are the two big powerhouses. Are they rivals? Um, like here, it's oh, yeah. Michigan and oh, Michigan yeah. State. They, yeah. they don't like each other. Crosstown rivals, okay. you know, it's the it's the big game, right? Sure, yeah, and, here too. And I actually, you know, and I I went to UCLA for my undergrad, and then I work at UCLA, so I'm or USC, so I have, I sit in both. Okay. And the um and the culture of USC is much more um of an initiation. There's much more of a um, honor-based culture when they, they refer to the Trojan family, which is this massive mm -hmm. Trojan network. And if you look at the, and they're the, comparably the same size universities, right. but you see exponentially more USC gear, license plates, uh, bumper stickers, swag, uh, you know, sure. people, people um, live the USC brand. Whereas UCLA was like, you know, I went to UCLA and, okay. and, that's that's kind of you know in in our culture those are still the you know the they're pieces of the initiation process um honestly um another functioning thing and why it's so popular is um you know jujitsu schools are very close because you know the brazilian culture um is honor based right okay. it's very old school honor based culture i um, like that mark you know Japanese or Okinawan martial arts, which is where um, jujitsu came from, incredibly honor-based culture, mm -hmm. and and so all of the, you know, the, the the professors, particularly the ones that came from Brazil, but even now they've been now you know, multiple generations forward, those are fairly honor-based cultures. And when you go into a jujitsu school, you know you you there's a there's a code of behavior, there's a, um, a there's a certain amount of commitment and respect and um, you know all these modalities that are in place so mm -hmm. it, it is it is driving uh, a, a certain amount of initiation the uh, jiu-jitsu school of the world and that, that i didn't know that piece cool. it's yeah. uh you know i i knew that you know when people got in it they just loved it i've got a very close friend who works out at black lion which is where Jamal Hill, uh, who just mm -hmm. became the heavyweight champion, works out. Mm -hmm. That's here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he just, you know, fully formed man. He wasn't in need of anything in his life, but chose to get into jiu-jitsu. And it very quickly became religion's too much of an overstatement. But, it, you know, a thing that he was very obviously adhered to. Yeah. And, and the fact that you're telling me there's all these honor pieces with it, that makes sense. That, that's the piece yeah. that I would, that's what I didn't understand as he described it to me. It, it will, it's it's lethal technology, and that that's part of the um, the thing that drives honor, and mm -hmm. the reason why you see an honor based cultures are are in the military, and they're in police and fire and sports, um, yeah, for and sure. hunting. There's a huge there's True. a tremendous ethical um, code, and yeah. a lot of it is unwritten. A lot of it is unwritten, um, yeah. and they and they self monitor the hunting community is an honor-based community and and again it's a lethal technology so there's certain it behavioral yeah. things that you do and don't do anyway jujitsu is is that is that you know it as soon as um men in particular move into that arena of playing very serious games mm -hmm. then you need to have a certain amount of um beyond respect but safety of course in place otherwise it doesn't work the system yeah, doesn't work. You know, you have to, I think that's a great place. I, as, as, as much as I, my background is in Korean Taekwondo, I don't have a whole lot of groundwork under my belt, but uh, it's the same, same idea that because of the 
tremendous damage they're going to teach you to be able to inflict. Uh, it really teaches you that respect and how to kind of blow the whistle on yourself. It's, it teaches you that control piece. Um, and I've always been a proponent. Second chapter in my book is about violence. Specifically say, the more capable of it you are, the less likely you are to ever use it. And that's why you need to polish yourself, <laughs> polish up your violent uh, natural tendencies. Oh, yeah. When um, and, and I've done a whole bunch of other forms. I did Taekwondo for a while and Shotokan. I've got belts and all, you know, all these different cool. stand-up forms. And it, it all goes out the window as soon as you get into a jujitsu school. You go, oh, now this is real. It's real. Okay. Whereas the rest of it's academic. I, and le- I, even, spar- even sparring. Like, you know, that's rare today, particularly to, mm-hmm. to get in there and actually even go, yeah, you know, it's rare. Controlled yeah. and part speed and all that. Sure. But you never fight. You're never fighting. Like in mm-hmm. boxing, you'll fight. Like sometimes you'll put the headgear on sure. and you'll throw that, some, their, yeah. their sparring is actually really a fight. Yeah. But every fucking class in a jujitsu school, as soon as you learn the technique of the day and you do all that stuff, then it's like, okay, it's rolling time. And uh, it was like, it's terrifying because you you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you are getting in a fight to the death with another mm-hmm. man who may or may not be your size or whatever the story is. And mm-hmm. you either kill you either kill him or he kills you, except it stopped before you get to that point. And, and then you do it tap. again and then you do it yeah. again and you do it again. So you get to go right up to the edge of, wow, I, I got killed 10 times tonight. <laughs> by some fucking monsters, you know, yeah. and and I got to look over the edge into that abyss and go, I I quit, I'm out of shape, I was yeah. unprepared, um, I bail, like I you know I, all your shit comes out, yeah, for reals, you learn for a lot about reals, yourself. yeah, for yeah. realsies, um, and it that's part of the hook of um, jujitsu is that there's not a whole lot of reality left um, in our artificial world, like we're both sitting in climate climate controlled rooms yep. We, yep. We, we all we both of us ate too much food today we did yeah and we worked we, out in a in an impermanent in a, in a in, you know in a way that isn't natural you know i yep. got on a treadmill and i lifted fake weights yeah <laughs> i wasn't actually working yeah yeah and and so like and i i just ate ate food that i had nothing to fucking do with i'm like oh i paid i gave them some, a piece of plastic and they gave me some food and i ate it yeah, yeah. you know and and uh so when those little moments of, um, you know, authenticity, authenticity show up, yeah, a reality. Um, and then the other component to this, back to the men's work conversation, is artificial times require artificial means. And, mm-hmm. um, like, we're we're wired for discomfort. We're wired for violence, or at least to deal with, yep, deal with violence. Sure. Um, we're actually wired for miracles. You know, um, if you, if you remove removed if you removed all the science that you and i know and then just you know had us out in the woods uh, mm-hmm. where would where does the sun go <laughs> where the fuck does that thing go yeah, no shit. It, and and, yeah. and 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 thank god it comes back yeah and where where's is this the water season? coming from <laughs> and and the, these yeah. these stars and they move and yeah. lightning lightning comes out of the fucking sky i, I mean it's it the we are wired for a miraculous world that has been rem- taken taken from us, and mm-hmm. so and then now we have religion to provide us with an artificial miraculousness, and so same thing with you know ice baths. Uh, and honestly, and I don't know if you hunt or not, but I do. Um, just started this year, actually. I never was a hunter, but I very recently moved out of a more populated area into a very unpopulated area, and uh, you know going through this journey anyway. Hunted for the first time this year. Keep going. Um, if you'll notice, um, there's a there's a strange expansion of patience that men find when they're hunting, and, and you could say I, I, I don't care if you're hunting with a camera, or okay. if you're hunting with a fishing pole, or you're hunting with a rifle, mm-hmm. uh, like the there you know. Wh- whereas most most men, including myself, if I have to sit somewhere for five minutes. Yeah, it sucks. Dude, I got I got this fucking thing <laughs> out, dude. Bullshit. Like, yeah. I, or I'm looking around, or what am I gonna do, or what can I squeeze mm-hmm. in, and make happen, or whatever. But if I'm sitting mm-hmm. there hunting, I'm like, like, oh, I'm yeah. Just watching, I I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Like, hey, the wind in the trees. Like, was that wind, or maybe it was something else? Oh, doesn't matter. I guess I'll find out. Yeah, yeah time I, becomes just, the thing you don't pay attention to. It's just you're just dwelling. 
So um, in the absence of the authenticity that makes us patient, we have to find artificial things, you know, like meditation. And meditation is a new yeah. thing in terms of our, our other, you know, the human development time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. new thing. So is organized religion and so is agriculture even. All those things are really new mm-hmm. responses to an artificial world that we've created, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's really when, when even when you talk about, um, you know, the Masons and and men's work in general or where we're going is it has to include that conversation because we're not going back and i mean unless something terrible happens you know what i mean something uh, pretty damn fucking terrible happens <laughs> we're not going back it, it is and i and um i i get i don't i guess i don't believe in it. i have too much faith in humanity i think the fear mongering of um of our overlords is just you know toxic Oh, I, I very much agree. And when I say something terrible, I mean uh, it's sort of like how obesity is a disease of, uh, of, a, of a highly civilized world. I mean something on a larger scale to that to that extent. For example, like I said, easy times create weak men. Everybody talks mm-hmm. about that. Um, at what point are we so weak that we're easily uh, taken over? You know, a red dawn scenario, if you will. You know, something of that nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I was talking about. Keep going. And it well and. Yes, that that has happened and it will happen again. Mm, you know, that's what I, figure. Um, I mean, every every empire has rotted from within. Rome, it's just, yeah, for it's, sure. It's just a it's, you know historical you know code that happens. So we, mm-hmm. we are, we're, and we're in an, obviously all are the time frame of change. The cadence is accelerated. Yeah, and technologically, sure. you know, the mm-hmm. the pendulum swinging. I mean, it's mm-hmm. fast. It's real fast now. So, it is now, yeah. Um, but it will it will be replaced by something else, and you know there there is a there is a some larger engine or sequence in place that none of us can really see, and that is that's just my personal kind of take on the world. Is there are you know there's some there's some big things happening, um, in, in you know what humanity has become and where we're becoming and whether or not, you know, you with that you believe that we're bringing um, consciousness into the universe or whatever it is, but there is some strange destiny that, you know, we are, there's a, we are living it with a terrible purpose, humanity. Oh, I very much agree. That's a thing that I push constantly with my work with men is, uh, you know, you can't control that those larger big world things. I mean, think about it, of course, maybe chat about it with your friends, but ultimately it's your, it's on you to determine your purpose for yourself and for your life. It's not going to fall in your lap. You got to go find it. Um, but as a human, humankind, yeah, we're, we're fumbling through the dark, you know, no, there is no bigger thing. I mean, no one, no one knows what it is anyway. I, I don't know. I, I can't fathom what it, what it might even be. Um, Heraclitus said, um, you, you can't make a plan for the unknown. All you can do Fair is enough. be active and prepared. And I, and I, I have, I've always, um, thought that that was one of the wiser things that I've heard, you know, is we, we think we need to have some sort of authoritative, um, right answer or mm-hmm. the right path or, mm-hmm. um, or a plan, right? I, I need to know right. what I'm doing. And the reality is, you know, there is things are moving too fast to have a plan, but you can be active and you can yeah. be prepared. Yeah. I mean, that that's Jordan Peterson stuff, right? Prepare your boat. The flood's coming. You can't stop the water, but you can make yourself as strong as possible. Right? Yeah. And, you know, he's, he, and Peterson is a modern day stoic. No doubt I mean, about it. It's exactly yeah. I mean, what he is. They all are. All of those men that we talked about, you know, mm-hmm. and that, uh, and I, I think that we are on the kind of on the edge of another wave of of um, what I call great men. And they seem to come at the tail end of um, a period of, of prosperity. Because um, you don't get where be, we are. You don't get to be a great man if you're, you know, carving out an empire from the wilderness. True. You, you don't you're not dealing with philosophy at that point. No, you're no dealing, doubt. You, you're, you're dealing with tactics. In front of you. <laughs> tactics yeah right? and if you have a if you have a great war for example you know mm-hmm. you're not dealing with um advanced philosophical challenges 
uh, the war may precipitate or crystallize the arrival of the great men. But mm-hmm. when you look at all the founding fathers, you know, they, they all spoke multiple languages. They all knew multiple um, careers. They knew everything, every aspect of their plantations. They, they could all Renaissance do men. Yeah. yeah. And, and that doesn't happen if you're surviving. That's the True. product. Same thing. So with Athens, you know, all of those great philosophical, you know, men, they, they arose in, and the same thing with um, Rome mm-hmm. and the same thing with the enlightenment of Europe. Like those, all of those great men came out of a certain amount of privilege. No doubt about and, it. Yeah. Because your focus is you're able to focus it on higher, higher things. Yeah. I, I've always said, you know, when I'm dealing with a, with a guy, if I'm coaching someone, I talk about the time in front of you, right? Like what's the thing that you're concerned with and how far in front of you is it? If it's, if it's just putting on this sock and then put on the next sock, you're probably in a pretty rough shape emotionally. <laughs> but if you're able to focus at a year from now, five years from now, well, then you're, you're probably doing okay. And that that's the philosophy you're talking about. If you're trying to survive, we're getting into Maslow's hierarchy of needs here. You know, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're trying to just survive, of course you're not, you're not worried about art <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yeah. And there's a time to drop down to, you know, the foundation of Maslow. There's definitely a time mm-hmm. to do that. And those those are the times when, you know, something has happened societally. And it's like, okay, we mm-hmm. have to address that. Um, yeah. And so it's a, and also in terms of resiliency, there are, there are very important tools of being present, you know, and that's, and, you know, breath work is a really, really um, important, arrival in the scene it's one of the new ones um you know obviously men have been doing some version of breath work forever right if you pray or if you're if shit or if you sing yeah uh chanting all that breath work yeah sure is but the as a standalone field or practice in mm-hmm. you know with with wim hof and all of the research that's been breathing. Done breath work oh, and even huberman uh huberman labs you know, he, he's saying that uh, the, the all of the research on breath work is showing that it's actually uh, higher efficacy than meditation in terms of being able mm. to uh, regulate emotions. So, yeah, it's like there's a, a lot of um, really, really important resiliency components that are in the moment. Like th- that is your survival in the moment stuff mm-hmm. that you do need to talk. I look at my analogy about that is it's like a map reading in that, you know, when you're out there, you we're hunting and you, you're reading your map, mm-hmm. about 1% of our lives are looking at the map. Yeah, the rest like, of it's, I, you I, know, exercising I, what you learned, hey? Like, well, actually. Yeah, it's like, okay, I need my azimuth. Okay, orient this map. There's my azimuth. Um, is I know the general direction. And then looking at this map, there's some things that I can see are going to be challenging. Like there's this big blue area and there's a green area. Okay. okay. It's like, all right. Yeah. And now you gotta put fucking fold the map up. And then there's the, there's the forest. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. wow. So 99% of life, like that's here. That's, that's uh, in, in the army, we call that 25 meter targets. Like you're not fucking with a 300 meter targets. Right in front and, of you. Like, th- those are high, those are high value items. And every once in a while you got to, you know, look up, but mm-hmm. most of the time it's like, bing, 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 25 meter targets. Okay. Um, that's, and anyway, that's called route finding versus navigation um, in the map uh, parlance of map reading. So navigation is the, is the map work. Route finding is actually living it, getting, being out there and doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And going, oh, that pit is not in the map. <laughs> Yeah. Or yeah, they, you know, they didn't put that there. This tiger trap, that yeah. uh, the punji sticks, they weren't there. Uh, I'm kind of taking a left turn here. I'm curious if this is the thing you thought of. You've thought about it, but it is from an anthropological perspective. Who stands to gain from softening, deleting, um, socializing away masculinity from boys and men? Who stands mm. to gain from that? Oof, that's a that's a that's a pithy topic right now. Um, it it's the big one started from you know the real shut down Marlboro men in the fifties. Mm-hmm. Like that was kind of the um, John Wayne. Yeah, um, and those were 
you know, those were the legitimately, you could call that, you know, toxic masculine men. And, you know, obviously there was misogyny, there was racism, there's a bunch of mm-hmm. stuff that that's legitimate, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we can dismiss mem- feminism. I know that there, that's a, that's a bit of a, you know, whipping post feminism, yeah. but you it know, you, not, realize yeah. the, you realize those chicks couldn't fucking vote. Yeah. Not so long ago. It's like, you gotta, yeah. you gotta go like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, yeah, let's the uh, civil rights movement really fucking important. Oh, and definitely. Yeah. It's sure. but now, you know, we have got into, you know, BLM feminism that we're so far, you know, off the, you know, overcompensated, the I would say at this point. Yeah. So back to the topic. Um, yeah, some things had to change. There needed to be mm-hmm. some big uh, uh, recalibration of masculinity. And it all got thrown out in the 60s. All of it. it did um, indeed. I mean, there was almost nothing left um, of of masculinity. And and then when the pendulum swung back again, right, 70s and 80s, with mm-hmm. the you know, Wolf of Wall Street, I mean, that was where... The only men who swung back were the real dark, toxic ones. You mean you mean Wall Street? Don't mean to correct you, but you're talking about uh, not Sheen, it's uh, Doug Douglas, Nickel Douglas. Yeah, it, um, meaning yeah. it was um, make as much as you can. Yeah, greed is good, right? Yeah. yeah, and at that point, the the first like what you would call the first formal mythopoetic men's movement happened, and that was where you know you see uh, Robert Bly, um, uh, Gillette, and you know all the, the that traditional men's movement happened um and the challenge with that was it it did recalibrate from the 80s and it um, it happened in you know, mid 80s was the first men's mm-hmm. movement you know iron john okay. came out no Ten good Warrior, book, Love, Just finish it. all those yep things. so um and it it uh, was it a, an intentional recalibration of reclaiming something that was lost from us in initiation rituals, any sort mm-hmm. of rituals. Anything. Um, <laughs> and, and the, the challenge with this was that all the men, and I was involved in that. Um, we were basically escaping from a situation that we uh, were not successful in. Okay. Makes sense. You, yeah. You, you were trying to dabble in an area that just wasn't natural to you. I get it. Well, uh, men generally, the, the only men who went, into the men's movement in the eighties were the unsuccessful ones. Okay. The betas couldn't get laid. Couldn't, uh, yeah. yeah. Couldn't make money. Couldn't get laid. So like, well, I'm going to go out in the woods and I'm going to beat a drum. Ah." I'll get it right. And, and that's still there. Well, it's definitely happening. I would tell you that's a large component of a large, yeah, a big piece of the red pill. movement. it's a bunch of guys who aren't going to be able to do it anyway, no matter what they're just pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. And And that's on both sides. You know, you've Definitely. got yeah, for sure. You got a lot of still the hippie dudes wearing the ponchos, and they're going the ayahuasca guys, just yeah. fucking running from their their responsibilities in the world. Yeah. And then yeah. the same thing with the commando dudes, you know, with their with their their Navy SEAL training and their camo, and it's like, all mm-hmm. right, guys, you know, it's like it's cosplay on both sides. Oh, I agree. Yeah, it's it's makeup, and, it's make believe, it's a pageant, it's a pageant of sorts. <laughs> so, um, it and then it, and it. It will it will die um, if it doesn't get um, centralized and integrated into like legitimate success. And this is where um, the leaders of the men's movement need to take very good note in that you know, whatever the work is that we're doing needs to drive measurable success. Men need to be getting laid. We need to be making money. We need to be running for office. You need to go like, oh, yeah, social proof. Um, those are the guys um, that that movement that's creating fucking animals. Yeah, savages. Otherwise, yeah, and and when you go to jujitsu school, like mm-hmm. that's there are savages coming out, and mm-hmm. everybody's very polite to each other because you know what's what, you know. That's right. And and so that will be the question. And 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 I I'm really when I'm talking to leaders in the men's field, you know, it, it's um. Are, how many of you are um, running for even your local school board? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And how are you? How are you taking that information and, and passing it on to others? I, um, I, the way that I apply that is, I, I coach high school football. It's a great way to access young men yeah. who are who are go. dying for that. They're they're starving for it, and and that's I push that same thing. Find responsibilities, create 
purpose for yourself where you can pass on the stuff that you now know. It's your responsibility to do that. Yep. And part of this coming full circle is um, we need to be the ones who um, rebuild, maintain, rejuvenate our institutions. I agree. We're, uh, we're not here responsibility. to take, you know, we, we, we're not here to run from the institutions. Mm -mm. You know, oh, the government, all politicians no. are bad, bad. No, uh, the no. media is bad. Like, why don't you fix it? Do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you, you Dan Crenshaw step in and start. Let's bring it back to where it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of the men's the state of the men's work as I as I see it. Um, okay. There are a lot of men who, um, you know, are integrating it at a radically deeper level. And then the first go round in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But I'm still waiting for um, you know leadership to show up, and and there are a bunch of men who I think are the, are the finest men I know. You know when you look at uh, you know Ryan Mickler, when you look at yeah, um, he's doing a great job, and and, just... and Jocko, and those like when are you gonna run? Ian yeah. Smith is Ian Smith. He's running. Um, yes, that's the gym owner from uh, New Jersey, correct? Yep. Yeah, um, that's a good dude. For so sure. there, you know, it is starting to happen. You know, um, and that and that's exciting. So, I'm, yeah, you know. that's a, I, I get the uh, angle. Like Ryan, for example, I mean, he was a like a financial act or uh, you know advisor, or whatever, right? So he's a businessman first, I think, and um, I get that that he's he's probably doing well with what he's got going, but he's got the type of head on his shoulders where people are going to follow him. So get in a position where more people will follow you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm waiting to see that to see that happen. What about Jack? I know you probably have met him and talked to him. I've talked to him on the mm -hmm. phone and and uh, text and email and stuff like that. I've never met him, but uh, he strikes me as a guy who wouldn't want to do anything like that. He, he's a little more reclusive. That's my gut. Yeah, him. yeah, and and he's he's an artist. That's a different thing. Yeah, uh, you know, artists are a completely different operating system. Yeah, and um, but M Mickler's a king. You know, and, no and, doubt about that. And yeah. he has, and he has a, you know, he has ferocious, um, you know, um, agendas. Mm -hmm. You know, he and he he has he has agendas, and ambition that he has. He may not even know himself, but he certainly would not share it because he's humble. You know, but <laughs> it's but it's coming. Like there are, you know, at some point we're going to see some of these and honestly, every, and everybody's talking about Rogan as president. I mean, dude, we've been doing that for 10 years. No, of course. But, yeah. I don't um, see that happening either. He's, you know, he's so good at what he does do. I think Rogan's role, he's serving it right now. He is a uh, stand in for what used to be uh, Walter Cronkite, Peter Jennings, Tom Brokaw, yep. back when no news actually was mm -hmm. news. I mean, I go on there and I'm going to get, at least it doesn't have an agenda. Okay. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe he's not going into it with, all right, here's what we're going to teach you about today, but we're going to actually naturally learn organically some things there. I, yeah. I think his role is pretty damn important and that's the voice of reason. You know what I mean, he's, yeah. he's that, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and you could say he is a force behind political movements for sure you know he, so. he does he has a platform but man at some point like who's <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna fucking run who's yeah. who's you know who's and you know uh god look who, look who we got man but, yeah it ain't the best I, man i did I, I did a post when it was uh donald trump and hillary clinton going after each other and i fuck, i could name i could name a half a dozen people that i can shake hands with tomorrow philip that i know who are are better people than both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. If that's yeah. all we got, it just it's it's disappointing. Yeah. I, I actually think I I think Jocko could do it also because he's clean. Um, he's clean. He's got no dirty background, nothing to dig yeah. up on him. Yeah. And and well, I mean everybody does, but he's he's pretty fucking clean. Yeah. And um and even you know Crenshaw with with his uh, investments and stuff, he, he, that was a uh, disappointing um, I guess I didn't hear about that, I'll, but I'll dig I'll dig up on it later. I could see Jocko also just because uh, when was the last time we had a president, Philip, who actually had military experience? You're the you're the commander in chief of the military, and you've never oh, yeah. put on a uniform. What the hell is that about? Yeah, that had to be back to the Bush era. 
Uh, George Bush Sr., I think, was the last one, right? Um, who was, pr- yeah, who, uh, yeah, who was active. It had to be mm-hmm. Bush. Um, now Crenshaw was part, um, he, he's made a lot of money with, um, stocks that have oh, okay. somehow outperformed everybody else's okay. stocks, you know, know and, that. which is like all the Congress, almost all I know that Congress. I've heard that before. Yeah. It, it's like really people. And yet they, they will not pass, um, you know, any sort of separation where you can't be investing in the things that you're making legislation on. It's like, come on, Dan, you, you, you had to be better than that. And yeah. he was like, well, you know, you know, the, the salary for a you know Congress person is only 275 a year. I mean, I should be allowed to improve myself. I'm like, no, 275 Dan, ain't bad, bro. That's not bad. But still <laughs> it's like, no, you're not here to make money. You're yeah, not, that's here. not the deal. You're fucking here to serve because you yeah. have to, it's your responsibility. And then you go back to your life and you get to do whatever you want to do. And that's, Hey, awesome. You know what but I'd like to see? While you're here, that, fucking do it for free, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what you're talking about is, uh, it goes back to Cincinnati. Um, you know, we'll talk about George Washington. They call, they call him the American Cincinnati, a guy who never sought power. People came to him and said, you are the, the best guy. It's your duty to lead us right now. Will mm-hmm. you do it? And he accepted that responsibility. As soon as he was done, he went back to his farm. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever see that again. I think there's a purity there that can really be trusted. You know, like we as the people go to someone and, and, and nominate them, say, you're the one we want. You know what I mean? Um, I, Actually, Donovan was the guy who turned me on to George Washington because he's um, um, he's a huge fan, a huge George Washington fan. Yeah. And um, and so he was on he was on our um, he spoke to our men's group not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, guys were asking questions about things he, he's reading. And basically he was like. Well, you have to start with George Washington. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's so quaint. Uh, but <laughs> now the, 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 more I'm, the more I'm digging into George Washington, holy shit. So the, 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 the oh book God. by Ron Chernow, the, the uh, biography by Ron Chernow, that's huge, dude. It'll take you forever to read it, but that's the it's comprehensive. You're going to learn things about him that you never imagined. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Which one, I, oh, I don't have it. It's in my on my nightstand, but. I, I didn't even realize how bleak um, that little, the years after, you know, the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. and then how, um, you know, like England was still coming after us around the edges. Mm-hmm. And then you got mm-hmm. Spain on the other side. And then you got like, and we we're defaulting and everything and we have no commerce and things are, <laughs> it was just a total free fall. And yeah. they go, they go back to George Washington. Hey, yep. we, second we, time. Yeah, we need you. We, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, we need you one more time. He's like, I don't, yep. I don't want to, dude. I, I don't want. Already to. did that. Yeah, and but it worked. I mean, the guy, he, they were right. He's a great leader. I mean, as good yeah. as they come, you know. And one of the things, you know, the more you learn about him, he, he's a guy that you don't, you know, what he did, you know. And and I think that's a good thing in leadership. You should be known for your. Your results, you know, mostly. But he's a guy where nobody really knows anything about his personality. That's what another thing I liked when I started digging into him. He was a dude with terrible temper. He was a guy who knew he had to control that. He knew he had to control his emotions and just let, you know, let his actions do the talking for him. So getting information about who, who he really was as a man, it's hard to find. But once you start learning about him, He's a regular guy like me and you, man. He goes yeah. through the same shit that we did, which is really neat. I like that he was able to separate his himself from his work so successfully. That's a thing yeah. most people don't do. Yeah. Um, I actually wrote in um, General um, Mattis from the Marines. Mad Dog Mattis. The I'd get, be monk. right behind that one. I know who he is. Yeah. Um, that was the, the last presidential election. because I couldn't. I just could not in good faith vote for either one of those fuckers. So I wrote in George Madison, you know, so that that's the type of uh, leader that like at some point, man, come on. Yeah, well, that, I think that, about um, that you remember a few good men with Tom Cruise and uh, Jack Nicholson. Right. And at the end, he's, uh, you know, the whole you can't handle the truth speech. And the more I watch that movie, the more I realize that I believe 
Jack Nicholson. Like you got to have that leader, that hard guy, that take no prisoners, dude. You you want like a, a real politician lead you? No, you, you need real leadership. You need a hard ass sometimes. Someone who's willing to do that. So you don't have to. So everybody else can live in in the luxury in luxury, right? You know, you think about the yeah. the quote where. Uh, from American Sniper, where uh, Chris Kyle's dad says, "There's three kinds of people, right? There's the the sheep, the wolves, and the sheepdog, you know. And uh, yep. most people are sheep, and that's a luxury, and that's a cool thing that we live in a type of country where you have the luxury to believe that evil doesn't exist and it will never darken your doorstep. Because there's people out there who will protect you. We need more of those protectors. You know what I mean? And more of them need to be in leadership roles. I agree with you. Yeah. Yes. So, so you wrote in Mad Dog. That's awesome. Mad Dog Mattis. Yeah. I wonder um, if you get a note in the if you get like a letter from the government saying, hey, just letting you know, somebody thinks you should be president. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wonder if that happens. There has to be more. Because he, he was such a um well universally respected leader, you know. There's an anecdote uh, about him where he um he brought his Marines into Afghanistan at one point. I can't remember what battalion he's who is in charge of, but um, he he actually called together all the tribal leaders, um, local you know, tribal in, leaders. Yeah, in the in the in, in the tents on the carpets mm-hmm. with the tea serving all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I mean, he, here he is in with you know just a couple Marines. And he left all his other guys out there, and he says through an interpreter, "I come in peace. I do not bring artillery." And that's the, you know, when you come for action, you know, yeah. they, they call artillery the king of battle because, you know, right. it's basically when you set that shit up, you know, you, you own, you know, you own the whole, all the grid square. Everything and, in front of so you. He's saying, yeah. And so he's like, I come in peace. I do not bring artillery. And I tell you this with tears in my eyes. If you fuck with me, I will kill every single one of you. And they're like, oh, you got it. Bud. Um, I, I know <laughs> now, now I know who you are. And we're yeah. exactly the same. And, yeah, that's and, walk softly and carry a big stick, dude. That, yeah. That's that's basically just, like yeah. Just so, do not fucking kill my marines. Mm-hmm. Do not fucking try to um, betray me, and we're going to be good. Mm-hmm. But you do, and I will fucking kill every single one of you. I want and, you to know what you're dealing with, and that's fair, yeah. dude. I tell you this with tears in my eyes. <laughs> right. That's good. That's good. Yeah, dude. So what are you doing with K4? Yeah. Tell, this is your chance to plug what you guys got going yeah. on over there. Tell me all about it, if you would. Uh, K4 stands for King of the Four Houses, which is those four masculine archetypes. Um, the king, the warrior, the magician, the lover. And that's um, Dr. Gillette and um, Dr. Moore. So all you men out there watching this, highly recommend you read that book. You don't need to spend a bunch of money on you know joining elite coaching you know programs. Uh, you can if you'd like. K4 is a great one yeah. of them, but okay. get that book. It, I mean, it'll change your life, along with Iron John, which we just talked about, and mm-hmm. anything by Joseph Campbell, Carl Jung. And we actually have a living um, version of that right now in Jordan Peterson. So very much read, read all that shit. But um, yeah. K4 is an honor-based men's community. And we have spent a lot of time just on this podcast talking about initiation and you cannot self-initiate. So if you're looking Can't at yeah. even getting sober, getting in shape, getting, um, you know, moving into service, like whatever you're working on, that is an initiation process. And you need um, good men guarding the exits because we will run. The moment things get, we get tired or we're bored or we get distracted or whatever it is, fuck, we run. That's so, accountability. Yeah. So get in a men's group. Like if, for, even if it's a jujitsu school, you don't show up for class for a week. Um, you got, They're gonna call you. <laughs> you got jujitsu guys going like, uh, hey, are you yeah. okay? I haven't seen you in class, blah, blah, blah. So that's what honor looks like, you know. And and so K4 is an honor-based community. We're we're online, but we also do um strongholds, which are small local gatherings once a month, and then we do retreats, and we have a uh a tactical retreat in June, I think uh, the first week of June coming up, where we're going to go up to Oregon and do a bunch of legit tactical stuff. But That's we're cool. also going to do a bunch of, um, you know, leadership work and forgiveness work and some, you know, heart-based stuff at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that's K4. And you can find more about us on uh, k4men.com. 
pretty soon. And I'll put that graphic up so everybody can see it when I put this out on YouTube. So I'll be able to read your yeah. read your stuff. And how did you you know you you picked up a partner? How did that go? Joshua Winner? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I don't know if you're talking about my 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 wife. Oh no, life, I mean life partner. My life partner. Professionally. No. <laughs> Actually I, I call I call Josh my work husband. You know, oh, I like, gotcha. Sure. That's my work husband right there. You know, I'll, I'll accept. I'll do anything for that dude. Um, boy, it's really rare to find a value aligned uh, person, uh, a, a co-founder, mm-hmm. and you know, and in, in today's world, it's hard to maintain friendships. And and I, I true. my belief is energy. Well, this is not my belief. This is just a scientific truth. Energy cannot travel through a vacuum. So okay. That's why you don't get sound in space. Um, so unless men have a project that they're sharing some, you know, some aspect with, maybe I'm getting in shape and maybe I'm learning, I'm working on my, you know, my purple belt or, mm-hmm. or I'm, or I'm starting a company, a men's group. All of a sudden there's a, there's a medium that the energy of our relationship can, can, can travel. And so you got to find projects, gentlemen, if you're sitting at home watching this going, why don't I have friends? <laughs> well, fucking go do some shit. Go, go hunting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go, go, go to the. You know, g- take your fucking headset off when you go to the yeah. gym. Talk to the other dudes and go. Yeah. You know, hey, um, what are you into? You want to have a yeah. beer? Yeah. Or, uh, how, you know, how do you get those triceps or yeah. whatever your story? Like, fucking talk to other dudes, yeah. and you'll find out that they're just as, um, you know, appreciative of kinship as you are. Because yeah, lone, lone wolves uh, are not sexy, um, you know, destinies. That lone wolves starve to death. Yeah, they don't live long lives. That's yeah. for sure. You talk about that. Uh, so stop for it. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock it off. You know, and, and, and the thing that stops people from doing that is uh, this idea that everybody's looking at you, or that you're going to look like an idiot if you ask a question that maybe they don't know the answer to. Um, Nobody's looking at you. I heard I heard a pretty brilliant quote. I can't remember who said it, but in my 20s, I was very concerned what everyone else thought. It was the most important thing to me. In my 40s, I decided to quit worrying about what other people thought. And in my 60s, I finally realized nobody was fucking paying attention to me anyway. So stop worrying about that shit. Just go make friends, you know, make connections. That's how you, like, you and I wouldn't be talking if I hadn't reached out to you. It doesn't happen if mm-hmm. you're embarrassed and you're, you know what I mean? Like, you, you got to make those connections or they aren't going to mm-hmm. happen on their own. Yeah. And, and all of those connections need something that you're doing together. And yeah, you got you know, something in common. Otherwise, what are you going to talk about? And, and don't, and don't make it um, job or booze or sports. Like that's cool, mm-hmm. but you know, those things go right. And they carry a lot of shadow with them. Find something that's, that's, you know, growth oriented and dynamic. Which is getting in shape or start a, co- you know, start a side mm-hmm. hustle, um, a non a nonprofit, like you know, coach football. Awesome, mm-hmm. man. That, that's that's a you know, do pick something that's really cool. And because those men who are going to be coaching high school football, and my guess is you don't get paid a whole lot to do that. No, I do it for free, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you, you, the only men who are coaching high school football, those are good dudes. Yeah, go, they're trying go, like hell. Go where the good dudes are. Yeah, are trying like hell. Yeah, and there, uh, you know, that's the thing where you you make a great point. There's so many people who would love to access something like you and I are talking about and have no idea where to start. And I think you just answered that question. Go where you think those good guys are going to be and talk to them. It's just that simple. <laughs> you know, it's, it's easier than you think. Hey. Yeah, hundred percent. So, what's next for you guys? I mean, what's the what's the grand vision? I mean, K four Men's Group is going to bring some guys back into leadership roles, and yeah, anything, we got what, hey, we got, we got a mayor already. We had a you do had, good for you. Yeah. We got a um, uh, James Spike Harris. Shout out to you, sir. Uh, he's down in Louisiana, and cool. he was um police chief. And last year, he ran ran and won uh, the mayor of town because. Uh, there was cor- a lot of corruption. Things were not working well, and and it was really cool to see um, to see that happen. So James Spike Harris, um, Green- Greensboro, I think, was the city. But anyway, Louisiana. Yeah, there you go. So, so it, yeah, it is happening. And boy, we're just chugging along um, in the process of making more good men in the world. 
Yeah, that's the goal. Hey, I mean, that, that's yeah. my vision. That's that's yeah. what I'm trying to do. The things that, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't find a group outside of my coaching resources. So I just started researching. And once I, I knew a bunch of stuff, I'm like, well, now it's my responsibility to pass it along to other men. And that's why I started writing books and doing podcasts. Hey, this will help somebody. You know, and here's the thing. You don't get a lot of uh, feedback. Not that I'm looking for that. But most guys who are looking for this information, they consume it and absorb it and put it into their lives but they don't usually want to talk about it they don't want to ask you about it they don't want to you know what i mean building yourself into a better man that uh you would think this is the perception i deal with uh you have to open up with saying there's something wrong with me and i'm not good enough and that's why yeah. i'm no that's not true you, you can be better for sure but where you are where you are at is not bad you just you're choosing to improve that and that's mm -hmm. always a positive thing it isn't an admission of something yeah. wrong with you it, it actually sits right at the core of the initiation topic is taking ownership of your life as opposed to, well, I'm not where I am because um, my dad wasn't there for me. Oh, well, um, how old are you now? <laughs> like, well, come on, dude. Uh, like, yeah. If you're fat, it's because you eat too much. Yeah. So why don't you start working on that? And because that now all of a sudden it's, it's you, you know, the, and you've, you've heard Campbell's quote, um, the cave you fear to enter contains the treasure you seek. So you're looking um, for, yeah, it's the place you and, least want to look. Well, it, you know, the monster in that cave, that's you. That's you, yeah. And, and that, it, that really is the mark of an adult man, is takes ownership. If there's something in our life that is not as good as it could be, it mm -hmm. is because we are not as good as we could be. No doubt about it. Yeah, well, there's you, another J Jack Donovan quote there, right? It's uh, a substantially different thing to be a good man than to be good at being a man. And I would say that that's your responsibility to always yep. be looking for ways to get better. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So what's uh, so what is actually the the next physical thing? You guys have a retreat coming up. Do you have anything else? That's what's the next thing? Once, a, well, we got we just started cohort ten of our what of our rite of passage which is another cool. way of saying initiation. So cohort 10 has just started uh, yesterday, actually. And and uh, that's three months long. We'll be starting cohort 11 uh, in, I think, in March. So we're going to stagger them. So once every month, we're going to start another cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's happening. We got strongholds, um, like the, the San Diego stronghold just did a big event down there. I think we have our next one here in, in um, Los Angeles. In a couple weeks tactical retreat is happening uh first week of june and that's in and, oregon and, he said yep and then you know we have speakers every you know every week we all we get together and we have a you know it's either donovan or you know somebody's coming in to speak about uh, something central in the men some of the, it's about testosterone or sex sure. life or you mm -hmm. know whatever whatever the thing is sometimes it's about money um mm -hmm. Anything and in so, the Midwest? Anything over my way? There's oh, there definitely is um some strongholds over there. Um we haven't really made a whole lot of inroads in that yet. But hey, listen, we just we, we're like two years old. Yeah. So you know well, let me know how I can help, man. If you need yeah. something, you need some feet on the ground locally, I will you do got whatever it. it takes, man. I love it. I, you, you guys got retreats or anything going on? I'm not that big, man. I'm just uh, mostly I focus on being a, of right, writing the books, doing podcasts, bringing great uh, ideas and personalities from very intelligent guys who are educated, know what they're fucking talking about. I, I share that out with as many people as I can. I'm still, um, I still do construction to make money. Uh, yeah. This is a thing that I do as my passion and hobby. At some point, it might be big enough where I'm Me doing too. that sort of thing. But yeah, K4 is the. I don't make any money in K4. K4 is a is a passion it's a labor of love you know right. we, we um some of our admin staff gets paid you know we got mm -hmm. some we got some guys who make all the magic actually happen sure. uh, on the on all the you know all those things but yeah um there's not a whole lot of people who are making a living at men's work which is probably um probably should this way it should be i guess 
like we were talking about. Yeah, and, th- and that that makes perfect sense. And I like the balance anyway. I mean, I wouldn't want to give up. I like swinging the hammer. I do, man. I like building houses. Yeah. I like that. I enjoy that stuff. I don't yeah. want to not do it. And, and mm-hmm. it walks right into what I'm trying to tell guys to be. If I'm going to tell you that you need to be capable, I got to be practicing that every day. Same mm-hmm. thing with physical fitness, decisiveness, honor, but being honorable. I got to be doing it. And if, I think if I were doing this full time, I don't know, it just wouldn't. Uh, anyway. Philip, I've used your time for an for an hour, man. And uh, what do you got there? Are you can show me something. Oh, I just um, this is Donovan's new book. Yeah, I um, read it. That's good, man. Um, dude, this I, I put this one right in, um, right the in there with. Uh, you know, women was powerful. Um, yeah, it was, but it was that was a that was a blunt instrument. Blunt force trauma. Mm, bam! Mm-hmm. But this thing, this is a weapon. I mean, he really he got he got dialed in on this one. So a little more surgical, I agree. Ooh, this is a good book. I, so yeah. I think this drops in right in with Iron John, all the rest of that. Um, so look, look at Jack, Jack Don we're getting all that love. Start the world, yeah. stay in soul. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, I'm going to send you a copy of mine, and I'll send oh, you. Oh yeah. Uh, hey, show it again. Show show it again. Sure. What? Uh, Beautiful. Thanks, man. Oh, yeah. What uh, what t-shirt size are you? Large, and I would love one. Yeah, I'll send you a t-shirt. I'll send you a bunch of swag, some stickers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll see if we can do some work together again. Like I said, if you need something out this way, glad to help you. Uh, I would love to be, yeah, involved in anything you guys are doing. I mean, maybe at the very least I can come to one of your retreats and start figuring out how to do that thing so I can yep. start doing that thing over my life. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun hanging out with you. You just waffle. We'll, uh, like I said, we'll reach for that guy.